Hello students, the purpose of this video is to walk you through the SBAC math training test so that you'll know how to answer different types of questions on the SBAC test. So to follow along with me, please go to www.caaspp.org. That's www.casp.org. Dot org. From here we'll click on practice and training tests and students you will click here on the green button it says student interface practice and training tests. Now I'm just trying this out I um, if my teacher wanted to we could go through the practice process of typing in our SSID our first name and the session ID that the teacher gives us but if I wanted to just practice this on my own I could go ahead and sign in as a guest so I'll go ahead and leave these buttons checked and click sign in I do have to choose a grade level so I'll choose high school and click yes and I want to do the training test for the SBAC math test if I wanted to see a variety of content-based questions, if I wanted to see what types of math problems I would see on the test or what types of English questions I would see on the test, then I would look at the practice tests here. But I want to make sure I know how to answer the different types of questions that will be asked because this is not your standard multiple choice test. This is a different type of test than what we're traditionally used to. So the training test helps us answer the different kinds of questions will be asked regardless of what the math is. So let me go ahead and select the math training test. Um, all students will see a screen similar to this but um, in particular our students with um, special needs uh, if you have a case manager who has selected certain features for you uh, then please talk to your case manager so that you know how to access those during the test. Um, a common one that was that is selected is the text-to-speech option. So you want to make sure that yours says that you do have either that the items are read, meaning that the questions are read to you, um, and or the passage itself is read to you. And the passages are only an option on the English test. For math, that's not an option. Okay, it's not necessary. Okay, but a lot of these are also available to all students. For example, the graphing calculator, the highlighter, mark for review. A lot of these are available to all students. Go ahead and click select. You'll just verify that um, the information on here is correct. If it is, click yes. And here you need to play the video. Uh, that's to make sure that video and audio are working correctly on your Chromebook. Notice that I cannot select this button here until I have played this here. So go ahead and click play. Now you probably don't hear it on your end, but as I'm creating this video, I did hear audio in this video and I did see movement on my screen. So yes my video and my audio are working so I can go ahead and click on this button if they're not working then you'll probably need to log out and make sure that the volume is up on your Chromebook but again mine did work so I'll go ahead and click I could play the video and sound if I wanted to I could click on overview of the test site for smarter balance assessment for the SBAC uh, this overview shows me basic things, basic features that are available to me during the test. For example, the navigation buttons, um, the context menu, uh, it just shows me where everything is at, what tools are available to me during the test, those types of things. So you could take a moment to review this during the test, at the beginning of the test, if you already understand these because you reviewed them during this training test, then go ahead and click begin test now. Okay, looking at the first question, 
um, I see the context menu here. So if I click on that, if I didn't know how to answer this type of question, I could click on the tutorial. And the tutorial doesn't have any audio with it. It's just text on the screen and, and pictures. But it'll show me how to answer this particular type of question. So the tutorial is useful if it's a type of question that you're not sure how to, to actually select an answer. So you can let that play through. Uh, because this is a multiple choice type of question, um, the strike through it, the strike through feature is available. So let's say I wanted to um, I knew for sure, okay, this could not be the answer. So I could click strike through and then select this so that I know for sure, okay, that is not the answer and um, and I can use process of elimination to try and come up with the correct answer. Um, and then you can click off of there anywhere to go back to the context menu. So the tutorial is to show you how to answer the question. The strike through is to cross out answer choices. There's also the notepad. The notepad is for you to take some notes, but that is specific to this question. So if I take notes here, they will not be available to me on the next question. And then mark for review. Let's say I went ahead and just selected any answer choice uh, because I wasn't sure of the answer, but I wanted to make sure I came back to the question again later, then I want to mark it for review so that way at the end I do remember, oh yeah, I need to go back and check that answer. There's also a calculator here available to you. This is based on the, this is the Desmos graphing calculator. Um, you can click and drag it around so if there's, if it's blocking part of your screen, then you can click and drag it off to the side a little bit. You can enter in uh, basic math problems and it'll give you answers. Or you could actually graph things. Um, so let's say x to the second power and you would see the, the graph show up here. So for any questions that allow you to use the calculator, the calculator is available to you here. Okay, so let's go ahead and click next. And notice that the question number here changes, and I can go back to older questions here. So even though there are eight questions on this, on this particular training test, I can't move ahead until I've answered a question, but I can move backwards. Okay, um, for questions like this, it's asking you to use these characters down here to, to um, write your answer. So if I wanted to, I could say, let, um, I'm using the variable B, and then if I wanted to use a power, this button here is for a power. This is a subscript, this is a fraction, this is a square root, this is a radical with, um, with a different type of root, you have the pi sign, the absolute value sign, parentheses, imaginary numbers, so uh, you want to make sure that you're familiar with all of these tools here. Um, and then if I wanted to raise this to the power of 7, so I just clicked on this and then clicked on the 7, I could also move backwards um, or I can undo. So let's say I had, I let's say I typed this. Then I can backspace, backspace again, I want to use my power and then the 7. Um, notice that here it does not allow you to do any type of strike through because it's not a multiple choice type of question. Um, there is a highlight option available here. So if I were to highlight some of this text, I could come here and actually get a yellow highlighter. And if I didn't know how to answer this question, because I didn't know how to use these tools down here, then I could watch the tutorial for some support. Okay, once you're done, go ahead and click Save, and then Next. And then this is, um, this particular question is a true-false question. I'm probably not going to need to select both of these, 
but notice that the system does allow me to select both. So you really want to read questions carefully and understand them before going through and selecting answers. But you do have to select something in order to move on to the next question. And if you're just taking a wild guess, then make sure you mark the question for review so that at the end you, you know to come back. And then again, you'll click Save and then Next. And then here it's saying to select all the equations that can be represented by a straight line. Again, my calculator is available to me for this question. So if that's the case, then I can type out one of these responses here. So let's say x equals negative 2y to the power of 2 plus 7. And the question was asking me which of these is a linear function, and this clearly is not. So I could use my strike through feature to get rid of that answer. I could still select it if I wanted to. Let's get rid of the strike through. Whoops. Didn't mean to get rid of the actual line. Okay. So it's still allowing me to select that answer. So you do, you do want to be careful about that. But um, with this type of question, you can choose just one answer, or you could choose all of them, or um, any number of responses in between. But because it's saying to select all the equations that can be represented, please make sure you go through and you check every single answer and know whether or not it can be represented by a straight line. Again, once you're done, click Save and then move on to the next question. Now notice here it's giving me a warning sign saying I didn't answer the question. I need to answer it before I can move on. Um, it's because I didn't actually select any answers here. So let's go ahead and choose something, click Save, and then Next. For this question, um, even though it wants me to complete the table and put a response for every single item here, even if I don't put in an answer, like for these three, it's still going to allow me to move on to the next question. So let's go ahead and mark this one for review, click Save, and then move on. For this type of question, it's a drag and drop. So you're going to take your answer choices, and it can be any of these, okay? um, and you're going to drag them into the, the space that, um, that's recording the answers. If there was something I wanted to get rid of, let's say I didn't want this as my answer, then I need to click the Delete button and then click on My Answer. Again, click the delete button and then click on the answer that I submitted. Oh. Again, delete. There we go. Okay. Uh, but again, you do need to put in some sort of an answer to move on. Let's go ahead and click next. And then here it's asking you to use the arrow tool and add a point tool. So the arrow tool is this one right here, and I'm going to click, let go, and then it's dragging an arrow across the screen. And then I can click and let go. And that's my line. Now, if I made a line and then let go, and then let's say I wanted to continue this line longer, I cannot just click and drag. Notice it's making two separate lines. Oh, it looks like it did merge into one line, so that's perfect. Okay. Um, and then if I wanted to use it to add a point, then I click on Add Point, and I can um, click wherever I want those points. Okay. All right. I'll save and move on to the next question. And here I'm looking at this coordinate grid. Then I read the question, and then I need to respond down here. Notice that we've got this omega here. This uh, allows you to enter in special characters. So if there's a specific character that you're looking for, click on that, that symbol, and it will take you to this screen. Okay. And again, you do need to put in some sort of a response 
to allow you to move to the next question. So now I'll go ahead and click Save, and because that was the last question, I now have the End Test option. So I'll go ahead and click the red End Test button. Yes, I'm sure I'm done with this test. And it'll show me which questions I flagged for review. So I could go back to those questions. I could go back to any questions, but I definitely want to start by going back to these questions. So let's say I went to question number one. I looked it over and I was like, no, that can't be the answer. Let's try this one. And I can actually click here. Oops, not here, there. On the context menu and unmark it for review. So um, let's go ahead and do end test again. And now it's showing that I no longer have it marked for review. And I can go back and check these as well. I can also go to the question, um, update the answer, save it, and then uh, just keep it flagged. That I, I'll still be able to an submit this test. The flag is just an indicator for me, the person taking the test. It has nothing to do with my actual test results. So once I feel comfortable with all of my answer choices, I can go ahead and click Submit Test. It's going to ask me if I'm sure. I said yes. And um, now I have officially submitted my test and I am done. I can go ahead and log out. If you have any questions about how to take your math SBAC assessment, you can talk to me, Dr. Shaw, or you can um, talk to your math teacher. Thank you.